that's fed into yarn spinning, so you know, some of weaves cotton basically from these, these products. And these are called component networks. Often um, they are you know, smaller groups of people, not necessarily enterprises in a way that we would understand in the UK or the US. But they're generally larger groups of people, generally some kind of product of company is organising that. We then move across to apparel manufacturers, for, and these are the production networks. So you've got US garment factories designing, cutting, sewing, buttonholing, all of that kind of stuff. And they generally outsource all of that activity to somewhere in Mexico or the Caribbean basically. So that's where that comes from. And then Asia, we have the Asian garment contractors, which is domestic and, and overseas. So do yours. Uh, then we go into the export networks where you would have brand named apparel companies. So what's the what's the brand name on your shirt? Do you know? See. Some of you. Yeah. This wasn't in the workshop description. <laughs> <laughs> white. White. So white being uh, I don't know what uh, where that's located, the head offices, but basically then they're the company that is organising small all of the all of the all the input goes into those guys basically. They're making quite a lot of money. And then the department store which sells you the shirt. So the idea is that of course for nut gatherers we have exactly the same process except that they're doing it to, to component network would be making oil. So making some kind of oil. So this is the network production of non-edible oils in uh, the foothill of the Himalayas. So currently they've implemented networked operations, so they have groups or communities of uh, nut gatherers, they collect them in village level units and then they transfer those into a, a much larger global <coughs> unit for um, treatment testing and making them into a, into a natural product. The problem is however they're not actually able to deliver that straight into any kind of corporate supply chain and that is because they're not able to actually prove that their oils are are compatible to certain types of standards, which are fundamentally needed before they're allowed into a corporate, corporate supply chain. So, the, the idea is that within the Indian market around oil, the export market might increase, but requires assurance for quality control, international standards, assurance for the absence of pesticidal, pesticidal residues, and adulterants. And the, the fact of the matter is if we want these people to have more money or gain more income from their activities, they need to start making value-added value added derivatives of oils, not just the raw product. Um, so the idea is how do we use open data? I'd like to point out that open data is a very small part of this project, but we consider it kind of vital to, to its operation. We need to make sure that this bit works, but there's a lot of other work that goes on around this as well. So here's some of the data sets for non-edible oils, and as you can see, um, for wild apricot, sweet apricot, all of these oils are used extensively in um, your commercial products that you use for cosmetics, moisturisers, shampoos, all of that. So the oil is quite often gathered in by very, very poor people in India that will pay a premium price for this product when you buy it in the shop. So if you can see, <coughs> just for wild apricot, the cost of the seed, or the, the amount of money that the people are paying for the seeds from these people, is five rupees for a kilo, but they will pay 200 rupees for a litre of oil. So there's a very marked increase in their income and capacity if they can actually prove that they can have these international standards. Um, so here's, however, some of the standards that you need to comply to within just within India in order to be for perfumery and the oils and oils and seeds market. So several, um, basically there's several hundred standards that they need to comply to. And interestingly enough, just to get access to the standards is 2,000 rupees, or 5,000 rupees um, for oils and oils and seeds, <coughs> which makes it, it's quite frankly just impossible for rural communities to, to buy, buy this. Another interesting fact is that if you are doing this in the UK, you don't pay for access to these standards. So it's actually an extra barrier to entry for these communities. 
Um, I won't go into this unless you really want to know how to do the actual testing. <laughs> I don't presume anyone, anyone does. Um, so the idea is that, and we're, we're having some discussions through CTD with the, the Indian Bureau of Standards, is how we are going to actually make this information available in an open data format. So we're working very much with a digital technology um, program, but we are also trying to understand if just giving them free access to the paper will work just as well. Um, and hopefully we're, we're aiming to reduce um, their reliance on, on middlemen, which is an interesting question in and of itself because the middlemen in, in, in the engine communities actually don't earn that much money themselves. So we don't want to uh, put people out of work by this open data. We want to make sure that you know, the business model is sustainable for everybody. And that's, that's quite, quite difficult. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, that there's a lot of other work that we need to look at as well. And so we have, um, we have a designer working with us on design issues, doing some research into that, which would help us understand how to communicate quite complicated techniques to, to um, rural communities so they can do it quickly without wasting a lot of their time. And then also understanding how you integrate this into the workflows of the rural enterprise rather than just um, you know, trying to cycle up on top of the rural And then of course training and how you create trust um, across the supply chain, which is quite important in any supply chain. Yes. Okay, um, and in one minute, I'm going to explain <laughs> the framework for uh, that we're, we're currently investigating with uh, quite a few companies on, on, on how to explain the role of open data in the creation of um, smart cities. So it's quite a specific focus, but um, that's what we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> so the idea is, and this is why I brought up the global commodity trade approach previously within, within the previous example, is that we're looking at how um, you, you have this idea of an information-driven global commodity chain, where information in and of itself becomes a product. So the actual flow of data around the city has inherent value as in and of itself as an actual product, rather than just a, an auxiliary to a supply chain, physical supply chain. Um, so obviously I don't have time to explain all of this now, but the idea is that you would see, um, quite similarly to, to your shirt example, you have the raw components, which in this case is data, um, you have tweets, you have sensors in terms of form of actuators, and then you also have very large systems that are creating all of those, or you can actually raw components in the network. Um, and then we move into component networks. One example is a social network, there are many, many, many other examples. Um, moving into the production network, distribution network. Currently, the app stores and internet are the primary delivery channel, but I think that that's going to evolve over time. And then we're moving in. I, we're seeing the evolution of the creation of marketing networks. I guess the most important thing here to notice is that the end user consumer uh, is directly linked into the rural component network. So there's, there's quite a large feedback loop within this, this uh, commodity chain, which doesn't exist in the physical commodity chain. I mean, you, you don't go back and give input to the, the people picking cotton. Um, so we're working on um, basically working out where the open data sits here and working out um, how to map that currently. So any input you guys have is very welcome. And that's it. <laughs>